Hello, I'm Sang-Hoon Lee. Nice to meet you in cyberspace. Thank you for the invitation to ICRA Pain 2021. Today, I'll talk about ultrasound-guided cervical extrafemoral periradicular steroid injection. I want to describe it as a hydrodissection with a steroid mixture because it is not a simple injection. Before starting my lecture, let me briefly introduce myself and my clinic. When you walk inside my clinic, you will face a big tree in the waiting room. There are well-trained 12 staff and work together systematically. I'm the only doctor in my clinic. I believe I have one of the most efficient pay clinic system in the world. I had training as a radiologist a long time ago, but now I have been working as a pain physician for 21 years. I try to make a balance between practice and research. As a pain physician, I try to provide better and high quality treatment for my patients. I have developed a simplified diagnosis and treatment according to evidence-based medicine. I have been doing image-guided intervention since I started the pain practice. There is no blind technique in my clinic. I applied ultrasound in the cervical spine intervention since 2005 and published ultrasound-guided intervention in the cervical spine in 2008. I have adopted a new treatment if it is proved good. I discarded it if it was proved not well. I have been working to make an infection zero clinic with my staff. All the procedures have been done in the surgical room in a sterile condition. All the images were digitalized and saved for the future. The reception desk and counseling room staff are ready to explain all the disease, procedures, and prognosis. I let my staff regularly call my patients. Follow-up calls have established close rapport, monitored the pain procedures, and got feedback. I have had the result of each procedure and interpreted them to develop a better treatment. The education became a driving force for building respect and being a new culture in my clinic. We have a conference every Tuesday after work. For chronic cervical radicular pain, we have two guiding image modalities. One is ultrasound and the other is CM. Which one do you prefer? Some doctors prefer only ultrasound and hate a CM. Other doctors stick to the CM guidance. I like both, but I have a simple principle to apply each tool. If the radicular pain is caused by the paracentral protrusion of the disc, which one do you prefer? Usually, I choose CM guidance in this situation. In the case of central stenosis or type 1 modic change with discitis, I prefer CM guidance. The oblique sagittal MRI shows primary stenosis and black disc protrusion. I prefer CM guided interlaminar epidural steroid injection in case of central protrusion and intractable pain to the ultrasound guided procedure. Please keep in mind, we must undergo all the ultrasound guided procedure in an aseptic condition. Let me talk details about ultrasound guided periradicular steroid injection. I'll start from the target. The CM target of a injection is the internal aspect 
of bony intervertebral foramina. It aims to spray the contrast media into the epidural space. How about the ultrasound guided nerve root block? Is the target of ultrasound guided needle placements the same as the CM guided needle placement? The CM image shows that their needle tip seemed to be very close to the radiologic target. The authors reported that their needle tip was within 5 mm of the radiologic target. I repeated the same experiments with their protocol. It is the needle tip in AP and oblique view. The contrast media spread proximally and centrally from the needle tip. Let me show the CM image one more. Again, the contrast media spread one level above the needle tip. What is the reason? Let's consider the anatomy of the intervertebral foramina. It looks like the internal part of the intervertebral foramina is in the same plane as the external orifice in the axial section. Because of the inferior oblique orientation of the intervertebral foramen, the external orifice of the intervertebral foramen is located in one segment level below the internal orifice. When you consider the ultrasound target point as an intertubercular groove between anterior and posterior tubercle like this red arrow, the ultrasound target point is close to the one level inferior CM target. It is easy to misunderstand that the ultrasound target is very close to the CM target. Ultrasound target is an extraframeral perineural space, not the bony intervertebral space. It is inevitable because there is a physical limitation of ultrasound transmission and image producing technology. Where is the ultrasound guided nerve root block target? I wonder the reason for the hypoechoic echo texture of the nerve root in 2005. So, I harvested the cervical nerve root specimen from the fresh cadaver and put it into the cell line to compare the echo texture with the real one. Let's watch the histology of the cervical nerve root specimen, ultrasound demonstration of live and cell line immersed nerve root. Let's watch the histology of the cervical nerve root specimen. The nerve root consists of several large round fascicles. It is very homogeneous and contains abundant water content. It is a nerve root on real-time scanning. The echotexture of the nerve root consists of several round hypoechoic structures. I asked many experts about the reason 15 years ago, and they answered it was an anisotropy. My experiment shows cell line immersed nerve root looks the same echo texture as the real time image, and the echo texture revealed the histologic characteristic, not the anisotropy. The reflection and anisotropy is the most significantly influencing artifact that hinders the ultrasound guided needle approach to the bony foramen space. Reflection in ultrasound refers to the return of the sound wave energy back to the transducer. The tissue interface with a large difference in acoustic impedance, such as bony cortex, will result in a large sound reflection and cannot penetrate further. So we cannot see the inside of the bony intervertebral foramina. The anastropic artifact refers to darkening and loss of image resolution, which occurs when the sound wave's approach is less than perpendicular. I show you how this artifact affects the procedure. This ultrasound scan image is the transverse scan just outside of the foramen. The hypoechoic round nerve root is seen in between the anterior and posterior tubercle. The hypoechoic nerve root sinks into the darkness when moving up cranially to catch up the proximal part of the nerve root. It became harder to differentiate between the structures as I tried to scan the more central portion of the nerve root. The nerve root 
could not be discernible in the upper level to an adjacent hypoechoic structure made by anastropy. Thus, at this level, we cannot tell which is the nerve root and perineural structure. If I insert a needle at this level, the needle tip could reach the vertebral artery. Because of the strong ultrasound reflection of the bony cortex, we cannot see the inside of the bony intervertebral foramina. If I insert a needle at this level, then when I inject local anesthetic into the vertebral artery, the consequence is fatal. So, I must plan a target that should be visualized well and deep enough to spread perineural into the foramina space. And the optimal target is known in the groove between anterior and posterior tubercle in C5, C6 root. Then, the needle tip should be placed in between the nerve and transverse process in the C7 root. These needle tips correspond to the spot on the CM AP and oblique view. Thus, the target of the needle tip is in the extra foraminal periradicular space in the illustration. I have to hydrodissect at this level. So, there would be a far distance between the ultrasound target to the CM target than 5 mm. After contrast injection and needle placement, we took CM pictures on AP and oblique view. The black arrow is the CM target and the needle is placed in the actual needle placement target and measure the distance. There was a distance about 1.4 cm in oblique view at C567. Thus, it is a quite a long distance to deliver the steroids into the dorsal root ganglion. You may feel it is disappointing, but I can say that the ultrasound target is not the same as the CM. But stop comparing to the CM target. The ultrasound guided injection has very favorable result. How much does the therapeutic effect of ultrasound guided periradicular injection? According to my study, 78% of the patient showed overall favorable outcomes. Hemi G also reported no significant difference between the ultrasound and CM guided group in randomized blind control study. Park also reported that there is no significant difference in long term outcome between CM guided and ultrasound guided selective nerve root block. When do you do an ultrasound nerve root block? Will you find too many challenges? The first one is to find the correct level, and the second one is the proper placement of the needle at the periradicular space as proximal as possible. What is the clue to counter level? It is in the close observation of the shape of transverse process. Intervertebral foramen consists of internal and external intervertebral bony foramen. These drawings show the relationship between external bony foramen and the roots. The nerve root sits on the bony floor and is covered with side bars. External foramen consists of fibroosseous tunnel. The floor is an intertubercular sulcus formed by an anterior tubercle, posterior tubercle, and intertubercular lamella. The roof is free space. Each cervical vertebra has a different shape of a transverse process. C1 and C2 have a single blunt tip of the transverse process. C3 and 4 have small rudimentary anterior tubercle. C5 has a small, similar size of anterior and posterior tubercle. C6 has the tallest, prominent anterior protrusion of the anterior tubercle. C7 has a single, big, blunted transverse process. It has a rudimentary or no anterior tubercle. 
Can you tell the difference between these cervical vertebra? Please guess the level. Number 1 is C5. Number 2 is C4. Number 3 is C3. Number 4 is C7. Number 5 is C6. Number 6 is C6. Number 7 is C7. Number 8 is C6. Will you guess the level with the cross sectional image? Number 9. It is C7. There is no anterior typical and linear transverse cortical echo. The vertebral artery and veins are located in the medial aspect of C7 nerve root. Several hypoechoic C7 nerve fascicles are found emerging from the flat transverse process. Number 10. It is C6. It is a posterior tubercle. It is a prominent and tall anterior tubercle and V-shaped relationship in anterior and posterior tubercle. The C6 nerve root is placed in between the anterior and posterior tubercle. Number 11 is C5. The posterior tubercle and anterior tubercle becomes smaller and lower. There is a small U-shaped relationship between the anterior and posterior tubercle. C5 root emerges from the bottom. Next, I show you a video of clinical practice. Would you please observe the hydrodissection of the periradicular space? Before pre-scanning, I put some liquid gel for skin lubrication. I used a mixture of chlorhexidine cream, 80% of alcohol, and chlorhexidine solution. Before injection procedure, I show you all the nerves. Please find and close observe each nerve. Let me start from the C6 nerve root. You will recognize the slow movement and how I infiltrate the steroid mixture. I apply the hydrodissection technique to separate the neural fascia from the adjacent tissue. My next target is C7 nerve root. Does what I put in? I separate the perineural tissue with the steroid mixture. Specifically, in each level, I put 0.5 ml of 2% mepivacaine, 1 ml of 30% of dextrose solution, and 1 ml of dexamethasone palmitate. In addition, recently, I added 10 unit of botulinum toxin. I must confirm and verify my procedure with the conscious media for reimbursement. I use 1 ml of iohexol.
ultrasound guided needle placement is quite far from the internal intervertebral foramen. It is assumed that the therapeutic effect is much lower than CM guided procedure. As I already talked about the success rate, it is not. Then, what is the reason? I made several hypotheses of the therapeutic effect of ultrasound guided extraframural perineural injection. It is not simple steroid injection, but it is a process of hydrodissection with a steroid mixture. As you watch this contrast spread, there is a lot of paraneural infiltration of steroid mixture. It can affect steroids and local anesthetics, relieve inflammation and transient muscle paralysis. The second proposal is that suck steroid into the internal space through a potential free space between the nerve and paraneural sheath. This video and image demonstrate perineural hydrodissection with a steroid mixture. It is a lucky case, but I'm not always succeed in delivering to epidural space. When I put the needle tip inside the circumneural sheath, I can deliver the steroid mixture inside the primary space, even epidural space. I observe many cases that reaches the contrast media only in the external aspect of the foramen to relieve the pain successfully. I suppose that the natural movement can facilitate to deliver the steroid mixture of the nerve root in the tunnel. The cervical nerve root moves continuously when you are bending the neck. How much is the cervical nerve root moving? According to the study, the nerve root moves quite a long distance. It is a position of the dorsal root ganglion during the injection process, and it is the initial stage of injection. Let's suppose that I put it into the external foramen space only. The contaminated steroid will follow the nerve root as the neck is bending and delivered it into the internal foraminal space. Does the excellent hydrodissection affect the result? I have four different contrast patterns. The first type is definite perineural spread with minimal paraneural infiltration. The second type is definite perineural spread with moderate paraneural infiltration. The third type is moderate perineural spread with moderate paraneural infiltration. The last one is the intramuscular injection without perineural spread. I also classified it by foramenal penetration degree of the contrast media. The extraforamenal type did not reach the foramenal space and most went to the muscular injection. Lateral foramenal type infiltrates only in external foramenal space. Medial foramenal type penetrates the internal foramenal space. The data shows the contrast pattern versus pain relief. The periradicular hydrodissection with the spread has a better outcome than the failure of a periradicular spread. Injection with the achievement of foramenal space shows a more favorable outcome than reaching the foramenal area. Successfully hydrodissection should better outcomes than failure on real-time ultrasound. I believe the ultrasound guided nerve root block is the extraframal injection and extraframal injection is safer than the internal foramen approach of the CM guidance. The authors reported that the intravascular injection occurred in 90% of injection in the foramen little tip. The intravascular injection rate was significantly lower for extraframal little tip position. Furthermore, I can find and avoid the ascending cervical artery which is the main radicular artery. It is not always safe. Inadequate perception of the needle tip and anatomic structure drives the patients in more danger. In addition, the ultrasound is the sectional image and the ultrasound guided procedure has a long learning curve. The C7 nerve root and vertebral artery show similar echo texture. The reckless beginner may misinterpret the artery as the nerve root. 
It is not a joke. I I witnessed one case of perivascular spread of contrast media around the vertebral artery. It is another chilling case. I don't think it is the needle tip because it is smoothly tapered. It is in the middle of the shift. The needle tip is supposed to be here. Look at the contrast spread. It showed the perivascular spread of contrast media around the vertebral artery. There are many cases of intractable radicular pain to the ultrasound guided procedure. What is the non-operative second option? They are cervical interlaminar epidural block, cervical interlaminar block with ipsilateral pathologic fascia joint botulinum toxin infiltration, ultrasound guided pulsed radio frequency treatment. If you have interest, welcome to visit my YouTube channel. Thank you for your attention.